Hello, all you hardcores out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here. We've had the big guns on. Julian, Rico, Richard, Terry's here now. How are you doing, Terry? Mate, just... I'm kind of all joshua out because, you know, I did the, the commentary yesterday. That thing's done 1.2 million views in about 24 hours. And I'm like, it's overwhelming. Like, I wouldn't want to be one of those celebrities. Like, you can't touch social media. Like, the numbers are overwhelming. I'm grateful and everything. But it's too much to manage. Yeah. 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 You know I mean, I was, I, was, I, was, I was talking earlier uh, to Martin and I was saying, I'm hoping that video is the reason Eddie Hearn hasn't come out with his normal Monday service. And that Twitter video you did, Terry. Yeah, I hope so. I, ho I hope we've drowned him out for a couple of days at least. Anybody who wants to see what really happened, go to at Highfield Boxing Twitter. There's four little clips and it shows you a detailed breakdown on what was said in the ring and how Joshua lost his mind. Go and watch it at Highfield Boxing on Twitter. Terry won't be very popular with casuals today. Oh, why, why, why would I be popular with the casuals? Oh, because I slated Joshua. <laughs> Joshua is the hero, isn't he, Terrence? You know that. Mate. And you know what? In, in the beginning, like part of me was like, Poor guy, he's been left out there to. I mean, he's left hung out to dry on his own. And then I, I looked at it and I went, but these are all people he selected. You know, he talks about Big Meech, he talks about Larry Hoover, he talks about being cut from their cloth, right? They're the guys he looked up to. Yeah. So why has he got a bunch of yes men who wouldn't have survived? They would have survived in the Frank Lucas organization or even Nicky Barnes. None of those guys would have survived. Then. Shot dead, wouldn't they? Yeah, well, they wouldn't even get in to get shot dead. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> They'd have to be the guys running to the shop. <laughs> but what I'm happy about is the fake tough guy thing's been exposed now. That's what I'm happy about. Because, Russ, I'm going to ask you a question. Whoever had to go and train in boxing so they could survive in jail? Like, <laughs> you're almost doing it the wrong way around. <laughs> I know, yeah, if you've got to go to jail, if you're on a jail charge and you're like Joshua and you're, what were he, in his early 20s or something, and he looks like he's going to get some porridge because there were assault charges, weren't there, and yeah. in drugs. So he's broke his bail, he's sweating, and he's decided to take up boxing so he's going to go to jail. You'd already have a bit about you anyway if you're running around with that crowd, wouldn't you? That's what I'm saying to you. Like I've never heard that, and I've had loads of mates go through that process. No one ever said, do you know what? Now that I've got some time, let me just let me just learn how to do some taekwondo. Let me let, let, let me do some CrossFit so I'm ready for jail. It's either in you or it's not, man. You're either going to survive or you're not. There's there's no nothing can prepare you for that, as you often say, Russ. Terry, do you know in prison, right? And I'll tell you a little story. I were in prison once, finishing off the, that sentence for that obviously the, the police assault one. And when I was finishing it off, I were in a jail called Featherstone. And there were a Scouse kid in there. And there were, at the time, in that period at 90s, anybody who had a pair of Reebok classics in prison who came in, you're waiting on landings, you know, when they come up from court at night time. Yeah. An association, look, see what trainers they've got, and see if you know anybody. And I'd always say, he's a Scouse at Reebok classics. And they'd all go, yep. Yeah. And they usually were, because they were a popular trainer back in them day, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Plus they sponsored Liverpool. And I seen a kid from Toxter, Carve up a guy as big as Joshua. Carved him up, mate, and he must have been nine, ten stone, this kid. And then he went and sat and carried on at his dinner table, eating his dinner. And I was like, wow, and I've been in there a week. But wow, I was Featherston Jail, Wolverhampton area. Yeah, and that's why I say to people, it's either in you or it's not. And what we've found out is it's whatever that thing is, and I think... I think I said it in my podcast. You see my mum? I told my mum, Usyk's about 6'2", six 6'3", six ish about 98 kilos. My mum's like, he ain't that much bigger than me. And she had that sound in her voice like, he wouldn't scare me. I'm like, you're either bred from it or you're not. I mean, you've either got that character or you have. You can't learn it. You can do as many training camps as you want. You'll never get it. You either, it was either a seed planted in you from birth that's just grown through adversity and experience, or it's not. And he hasn't got that. Usyk has. He hasn't. 
Yeah. That's the reality of it. He hasn't. And he's found that out. He's talking about you need skill. He didn't need skill for, for God's sake. I know I can't swear on your thing for monetization. He didn't yeah. need skill. Say what you want. Man. He needed heart, right? He needed heart. He needed character. He needed to, at some point in that fight, when it felt like it was getting away from him, like he did in the Klitschko fight, he needed to just bang his gloves together and go, whatever's in this tank is getting emptied now. I see he needed you know. to do that. When I was watching the fight, obviously people texting us are watching and stuff like that. And uh, I was watching, I was sat here. And then Adam Smith came up and he said, Peter Fury's uh tweet. <laughs> right. You know, Peter, he'd have been watching that and they put that out. That production staff would have been hell on when they put that up, you know. It would have been hell on me. Because Peter ain't even got a blue tick, has he, for starters? Yeah. He don't want a blue tick, does he? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> But uh, I thought Peter called it right. 10-1 with one shared, Peter scored it. I had it 9-3 and I was being generous on one of them. Because I thought, if I say 10-2, that's just how it gets you. If I want to be harsh, I'd say 10 rounds to 2, but 9-3. I couldn't see a 7-5, so I don't know what they're watching. But what I did like about it, um, it takes me back to these tough guys that we, we always go on about. I'm not going to mention it because I get loads of stick, but I know people who are really tip nuts. And the first thing they do, they hit him back. But they never take the five-minute break like Hopkins did against Carl Zaghi. What Usyk did, he, what were it, 12 seconds or something? He were back in action. So that's telling you, you're not going to bother me kind of thing, like, isn't it, really? Yeah. And also, it just gave him a chance to... Regroup. To not get emotionally drawn into it. Yeah. Yeah, you take your 10 seconds, you go, OK, cool. Just back to your boxing, keep moving. You've got him, yeah. Don't well, don't don't feel minutes, the need though, to answer. Could have had five minutes, Pab on. We we're willing to give him five minutes, wasn't he? Yeah, but yeah, a, sometimes you don't need it. Hopefully he's had a good groin guard as well, so hopefully you don't need that much time. But what you do need is because what happens sometimes, Porky, when you're in the ring and you get hit low, you go chasing that. You go right. I need to get him back, and you get emotionally involved in that situation. And Usyk just probably took that time to center himself again, get back to the game plan and box. Do you think that uh, Gareth A. Davis was right in his corrections that Usyk's not what he was and his footwork once has got its first fight? Yeah, I thought that. Mm-hmm. I thought... Yeah. I, and I don't know if it's that he he's declining. I don't think it's that. But remember, the guy's got a lot to deal with. I know we all talk about, you know, he's a great boxer, but look, right now, his friends, his relatives are involved in a war that seems to have very serious consequences. Yeah. And this seems to be a war, literally, where someone has to submit, someone has to break. Get to his house, can they? There's a big crater, isn't there? They can't, they can't get to it, can they? Where his family are, yeah. craters around. Yeah. So, so, so he's got house. real, yeah, mate, he's got real life problems that he's dealing with, right? You can't, you can't tell me that doesn't have an effect, Russ. You can't tell me that. Where, where I got the impression with Usyk, he just wanted to get that fight done. That was the impression I got watching it. I don't want to say that he mailed it in because that's to disrespect his talent. Yeah. But he he didn't he looked like a guy that wanted to get that fight done. He didn't look like a guy who said, I need to finish Joshua off once and for all, which is what we were hoping for. Yeah, big shout out to Scott Brunt and Ziggy for drinks. Thank you very much. Well, Ziggy Marley. Ziggy, uh, J- Ziggy Jim. And Ziggy it. Stardust. I don't know about that. This is a nice gift. <laughs> Uh, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. I'm like six million dollar man, aren't I? <laughs> In my dreams. Don't know, man. A five of tops right now, mate. <laughs> uh, the actual fight, Terry. All the blame now. I mean, there's it's that old adage, isn't it? First you're angry, then you're upset. He was angry, Joshua. Then he got upset. And now they're playing the blame game. Is it? Is it right that they're all done now? All that is dropped lot. People are saying all the lot are dropped, aren't they? Uh, why would you keep them? Yeah. Right. Honestly, it's an honest question. Why would you keep them? So let, let's let's look at it. McCracken built a certain kind of Joshua. Yeah. It was it was basic, but it worked because he was he was relentless when he had the energy to be relentless. It worked. And then we've got the the kind of Cuban Joshua, the the Teofimo Stevenson, Teofilio, sorry, Teofilio Stevenson, the 
You know what I mean? All that sort of stuff. Shaka the Stevenson, isn't it? Shaka Stevenson. Hmm? Shaka Stevenson. Right? No, no, no. The, the, the old Cuban heavyweight. The guy that looks oh, a bit yeah. like Ali. Is that the one from Ali's era who won it in 72? Uh, 72 or 76. Okay. I think it was 70. Yeah. 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 The one so, Ali didn't fight, didn't he? Because he fought... It's 1960 champion Patterson. He, he won it in... No, he won it in 60. Patterson 50, 64 won it. No, it was yeah. no, no, no. I think Patterson was Patterson fifty two. Fifty six, Pat- fifty six. Patterson won it. Ali okay. sixty. Fraser, Fraser 64, sixty four. Foreman sixty eight. That Cuban you're on about seventy two. I don't know when it is seventy six. Can you probably tell me? No, no. In. I think he. No, I think he won like three. So it might be seventy six, eighty, oh, eighty four. Oh, oh, right then. Well, Americans what they're in eighty. So Ali never fought. Yeah. He fought every other one, didn't he? Every other Olympian, didn't he? Gold medalist. Yeah. But also, Stevenson never turned pro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he didn't. He won't allow, he won't allow yeah. it to the country, would the Castro won't allow it, would he? Yeah. He, yeah, they just gave him all the money he asked for because it was more important to have him as the figurehead of the amateur scene. Yeah. But he was the real deal, wasn't he? Apparently so, yeah. Yeah. You but, think- so Joshua tried to be him, Russ, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then that didn't work. Like Usyk, Usyk just said, hey, you ain't going to do that to me. And then he went back to being, I need to be that destroyer again. But he didn't have McCracken there to, to bring that out of him. Because I, I keep asking the question, what was the point in getting Robert Garcia there when you didn't do anything Mexican? You didn't throw a left uppercut. You weren't doubling up on your hands. You weren't doubling up on the right. You weren't doubling up on the left. You just looked... <laughs> looked like... It's almost like Josh has got this image of how he should be perceived but he hasn't got the tools or the capability to do that. He hasn't got the heart of a lion, right? I don't care how hard he trains. I don't care how dedicated he is. You don't have a heart of a lion if you don't have the courage to impose yourself on another human being. And he struggles with that, right? When people stand up to Joshua, he melts. That's a big problem. He, he hasn't really got an identity in the ring. And he, he's nearly 33 years old. That's the problem. He keeps thinking he can add to his skill set when boxing history tells us, Russ, as boxers get older, they do less, but they just do it better. And he's trying to add more at a time when he should be doing less and doing it better. He just, yeah, he, he's in a mess of his own making, it would seem, because all of these appointments are Joshua appointments. You know, no one forced him to take that team on board. That was his choice. He, he got rid of McCracken. McCracken didn't want any of those jokers around. Yeah, but he didn't say no for months, didn't he, McCracken? He just kept going up there and not saying no. Then he walking about quiet while they were running riot. Yeah, the but he saw what was before. coming. I don't know. It's too quiet, Rob, isn't he? Um, M- McCracken's been in the game long enough to know how the movie ends. I know. They've seen it coming a mile off, so he just stayed quiet and took his money, didn't he? Yeah. When the fight is telling you how things are going to be, it's always a problem. The fighter's job is just to hold people accountable for what they're meant to be doing. Mm. Yeah, jo- Joshua tried to be his own trainer. He tried to be his own manager. He tried to be everything. He didn't leave it to the experts. He didn't trust his experts. And you saw on Saturday night, yeah, he was just isolated. He didn't trust any of those people in his corner. Do you think that comparing Anthony Joshua's training regime to Frotcher's is night and day? Because Frotcher's regime is, I do two weeks on my own, and then I do 12 week with Rob. But my job is to turn up in shape for that camp and to do his own cardio. McCracken don't go out following in, in a car, you know, like Joe G and Mick Whale and people like that do. It, it Frotch used to do it with his mate, Adam Fox. You know, his runs, he had the same run every day. While Joshua doing the runs, because if he's left to his own devices to do them, what are he doing them? He, he strikes me as the guy that does what he's told. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, just from some of the guys I know that were with him at GB, he's a he's a hard trainer. There's no question about I that. Really he's a hard trainer, but you know, towards the end, can this can these people in the camp creep into his head? And if Joshua decides he don't want to train one day, who's going to say, "Well, okay, you're not training," but who's going to tell him, "No, you should be training"? Is there anybody there who was in charge of him? If well, you saw. Well, you saw on Saturday there wasn't. Want, well, nobody would wanted to say anything because they all didn't want to get they didn't want Joshua to turn them and then say get rid of him. They all want to they all need the money, don't need the job, don't they? they, they want mate, mate, his old his old man can even get a grip on him. Yeah. Well his dad there. 
the guy in the green when he's coming down the stairs. Yeah. He brightened him, didn't he? I believe he brightened him, didn't he? Pushed his hand out the way. Yeah. Yeah. And like in African culture, that's a big deal, by the way. You know that you're not supposed to do that. What, to your parents? Yeah, you can't do that. I wonder if his head had just gone, you know, because that's what they're trying to make out, isn't it? He's had a lot of pressure. I keep hearing the word pressure from Frank Smith and a lot on his plate and all this. But if he'd have got the decision, would we have been hearing about, about all this, Terry, would we? If he'd have won on, won on a split, we wouldn't have heard a word of Pete. No, we wouldn't have heard a word of it. And, and, and this pressure, it's self-inflicted. Yeah. All of it's self-inflicted. You wanted to be this person, AJ. You wanted to be the face of boxing. You wanted to be the man. You wanted to sit on top. What did they say? Road to undisputed. Yeah. Now There's a price that comes with that. It's not about the belts to say now because he's a big name, according to Frank Smith. Yeah, look. Well, if I said to you, Russ, you're going to be the richest, most famous podcaster in the world, you have to be prepared for the fact that people aren't going to like you. Yeah, of course you are, yeah. If you're not, you can't do this. You can't be a public figure if you want the world to love you. And I'll be honest with you, Russ. My whole theory on Joshua has come down to this over the last few days. He wants to be feared because he's so scared and so insecure inside. He wants to be feared. Who knows what happened to him when he went to Nigeria and he went to boarding school out there, which no one ever talks about, but he went to boarding school out there. And you know, like, you go to boarding school in Africa, you're going to get beaten up, that's for sure, because there are a lot of tough kids there. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't... <laughs> It's it's tough out there, mate. So well, what happened to him out there where he had, where he felt the need to come back and be the supposed tough guy? But he's not even the most feared guy on the Meridian estate. He never was. Do you feel, Terry, that when it, it came on top with him and he was faced with prison or getting bail and talking, do you think that he talked? I know he did. I won't, it wouldn't surprise me if he talked. Yeah, Joel Saunders came out and said it as well. But how would he know? He's from down that way, isn't he? Out of Hartford, sure, is it? That way I see it on motor when I go by that area. No, nah, no, nah, but how would... How would no, 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 hold on. No, no, he's saying he's... Uh, I saw Bella Joe come out on, uh, and say he uh, that the squealed. But it's going to it's gonna be interesting, isn't it? Two assaults, drug dealing. You're on remand, you get bail after two weeks and then you get killed in its service. That's not bad going, that, is it? He must have had some good lawyers from EIS. Must have had some good letters put in there. Yeah. Uh, look, I imagine someone called in some favours and that's happened. Whether he squealed or not, I think he's got the character to do it, but I don't think Billy would have proof. Well, I don't see any art in him. I see somebody who'd look for a way out. Yeah, and that's what we've never seen with Joshua. We've never seen him really impose himself on someone who wants to impose themselves on him, Here's like Ruiz question. did. Here's a good question for you. All right. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Ruiz imposed himself on it. What fights have we seen him in? Where we thought, oh God, he's not having his own way, and he's just squeaked by. Parker won. Referee were maybe on. Vlad. Vlad at a push. Tack him. He would knock it. No, 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 no. Yeah, Tackham's a sparring partner. Vlad well, was I the first guy. He did an end towards Tackham. I didn't like the stoppage on that. Me. I didn't like the stoppage, but I didn't think Tackham posed a threat to him. If you see what I mean, he was just annoying. Well, Johnny Nelson said Tackham's like Oldfield and George Foreman. Johnny Nelson's never wrong. I know. He's a legend. Oh, man. Mate, your comments are going to go mental now that I've just said that. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Johnny-isms. What did you think to tactical breakdown from Dave Caldwell and them on Sky? Ah, they stole most of the stuff that I said, but it's okay. I know. I know Penfold. I think that were rehearsed, because if it weren't, they nailed it straight in every take, didn't they? That. This probably was rehearsed, man, because you got to learn how to use the equipment. Yeah, I thought he did well. I don't like to say it, like, but, you know, we've got to give credit where credit's due. I thought it was good for him to do that. It's the first time we've seen him doing stuff like that. And I thought, they're evolving, aren't they, Sky? They're trying to take the lead, aren't they? Yeah, well, they already have the equipment, so why not apply it to boxing? It's took long enough, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But, mate, that's how I look at it, like, all these guys, right, were all part of this Joshua machine. But I think most people in the sport knew that he wasn't going to win the second fight. I wanted him to win because I thought it would be better for boxing. But most people knew that he wasn't going to win this. And so you saw people slowly start to 
distance themselves. People sticking the knife in a bit more. Even the Sky commentary started being quite anti-Joshua towards the end, if you remember. Yeah, I was a bit uh, surprised. I was talking to somebody actually about it, and they were like, "Oh God, have they all fell out?" So why says? Well, they were a bit harsh on Joshua, what the Sky team. So he's, he's, uh, he's with that zone now, isn't he? He's not with that. Yeah. You know, if you're Adam Smith, you're laughing now, going, <laughs> you lot can have Joshua now. Good luck rebuilding him. See, Adam Smith uh, interviews and titles in his interviews, they're trying to stir it up all them YouTubers, aren't they? You know, we've been interviewing Adam Smith. Some at clickbait titles, there's at Slate and AJ, where they weren't a dead when Eddie were with him, would, where Eddie were at Sky, would they? No, of course not. And look, we've got to, we've now got to give Eddie credit, right? Because he kept a lot of that rubbish away. Like he, 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 because <laughs> what we can conclude from this, Russ, I think is Joshua's been like this before. We've just never been able to see it. Yeah. And so you've got to give Eddie credit for, for keeping the gravy train going for as long as it did before it came off the rails. Oh, they know what they're doing. A match room's a machine, isn't it? Everybody's in the pocket, aren't they? All the media, mate. I mean, did you see how they all regrew? Listen. I've got a video coming out tonight, right? Everybody will be seeing it. I'm going to put it out smack after this, and it's called Liquors of the Week. That's what it's called. And I picked five liquors, me, and I've thrown some money at production at this, quite a bit for this week. And this is fantastic, right? And I haven't even seen it, but I know it's good because I've said, just do what you want with it. They're the five people who I'm picking. So you watch this that's out tonight, and you're going to fall about howling. But it's called... Liquors of the week. <laughs> Russ. What? Russ. Do you remember when Joshua started crying and people started clapping? Yeah. In that press what conference. Was that about? I was like, hold on. Leaders want their back. Yeah. Yeah, this guy lost. And he's crying because he lost like a child. Very and you are just applauding it. Very convenient after what happened before, wasn't it? Yeah. And you're there just, just clapping. And then Eddie had to come on and start saying all these people online having a go. These are the same people you wanted to buy tickets. Yeah. These are the same people you wanted to buy pay-per-views. Like when we were buying pay-per-views, we were the best fans in the world. We were the most knowledgeable fans in the world. Now we're the worst fans in the world. This yeah. is, listen, man, you can't have it all ways, Eddie Hurt, man. Your cash cow, I mean, he's flopped on you. You're going to jump ship if Canelo loses. Oh, God help Eddie Hearn. He's going to be in for a, a rude awakening. And what they'll do now, the, all the rest of them, your Bob Arams, Bricktop, the Bob Farber, Bricktop, Al Capone, oh, no, not Al Capone, what's he called? Al Eamon, them lot, Blue Lou, Lou DiBella, all them boys over there now, they're going to be thinking, Oscar De La Hoya, they're going to want to freeze Eddie out and do anything they can now to stick knife in, aren't they, on anything. Yeah, wouldn't you? I'd slap, yeah, of course I would. Yeah, I'd stand on his. Oh, yeah, I'd just stand on him, squash him, stamp on him. <laughs> I can, so I can tell you, you know, Hearn's been dragged into meetings these last two days. Oh. Because you know, Dazona, like, what the hell is happening here? Yeah. Because you think about it, right? People, people ignore this. All these chief execs know each other, they send their kids to the same schools. They kind of go to the same clubs, eat in the same restaurants. They go to the same conferences. They all know each other. Yeah. So Josh is having a meltdown and old Shay Sega is probably having dinner with his family. And people are like, mate, what's going on with your guy here? Jo Josh was having a meltdown. And now he's there going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is the guy that we, we spent how much money on this guy? Imagine that. Imagine so, that Len Blavatnik, whatever, that billionaire who's put yeah. two billion into that zone, and all he's got to show for it is Joshua crying his eyeballs out because he's been filled in for the third time. And he looks like he's going to be two, two and a half a year away from a title shot now, unless they start paying, unless they start pulling money up. He, and that, that's what he's got to show for it. And, the, and Canelo is it to miss with them, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, so was it worth it? They may have just given the money to Oscar. Well, I tell you this much, right? Eddie Hearn not done too bad, aren't it? I mean, I heard a rumor the other day what Tommy Coyle got for going out there, <laughs> mega dough. So he, everybody's, but Eddie were obviously taking his twenty percent if he were overpaying everybody, wasn't he? With, with their money. Remember, we said we said this when it first started. We just said 
boxing's aim is to find people with money and to separate them from their money. In two seconds, let me just tell Reggie that I'm filming because he's been to the seaside. Reggie! There's no seaside in Doncaster. Be back What's back seaside? Later. Got Reggie. I know he's uh, been he's been to Cleethorpe's on for day. What, he, that's what, a, yeah, that's a, that's a fair old drive. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone there. We uh, me in laws to build sandcastles. He likes sandcastles, don't he? Bless him. <laughs> I, you know, he's probably there. He's probably found the most efficient way to combine the forces of gravity, the um, the adhesive qualities of the sand, and all that. You know, he's just figured everything out. And it'll be the one. It'll be the one sandcastle that doesn't get swept away. He's already told me, Dad. I goes, well, He goes, you know, Moon. I was, yeah, you can see you wherever you are. I was, yeah, I know. He goes, and you know, sand. I was, yeah, he goes, there's more grain, there's more stars in the sky than there is grains of sand. So where'd you get that from? He was Google. <laughs> God, yeah, he's a good, smart kid. He's been to Cleethorpe's in his pipe zone at, and he's uh, he's got pictures and yesterday. And he's pipe zone. He's getting the Perry Howe T-shirt. No, he's got a Dennis Fight Zone t-shirt on and a Fight Zone hat, strutting around, because I said, I don't mind them. So he's been wearing it. I'll put my Dennis White collar boxing t-shirt on if I have to put one on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sod, aren't I? Well, getting back to Joshua, yeah, I agree, mate. He's, he's got that many people gassing him up, hasn't he? Mm. And, and how many real boxing people did you see in that picture? Probably only his cousin, Benga. is the only guy where in terms of the wider boxing public, there's some respect. The rest of them are all chances and blaggers. Oh, so I've seen, I've seen some of them. They look like the fresh out of school, don't they? Probably are. Well, 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 what job does he do? Oh, well, he gives him... He has to make sure that he passes him this thing to go in his ear that's got like a, a thing on it. Well, like them things I used to wear, beeps. He went yeah. one in his ear, and other one passed him a Lucasade towel at the re we spot. They all had like different jobs, didn't they? What was all that about? And he had he did an interview after the we spot, and they put the towel on him and they changed it, didn't they? So he could get the thing in the logo in the video or whatever. Madness. Well, well lucky there was no logo on that towel that he threw out when he left the ring. Did he spit on belts, Terry? Yes or no? I think he did. Well, I've been told he did. If you superimpose it, you can see it. They're not speaking about that. There's Eddie Earns saying, I'm hearing the word mental health a lot. He used to amortise him fewer over that, didn't he? I'm hearing mental yep. pressure, a lot on his plate. Uh, it was just a reaction. He, 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 Tony Bellew has come out to bat for him. Concussion. Uh, he, he'd been knocked about. blah de blah And all six semester. Blah, look. It's the same old people being wheeled out, but do you know what? Nobody's buying it, are they now? We, we, we know what we saw in September last year. We know what we saw this time. Is that a what year we saw it, and was it, it year? I still, I'm still not convinced Usyk is the top heavyweight. I'm not. I think we're falling into the trap we did with Ruiz, where because Ruiz beat Joshua, we elevated Ruiz, but Ruiz isn't that good. I think Usyk... I'm not saying I'm not saying Usyk's down at Ruiz's level. What I'm saying is this notion that Usyk's a hard fight for Fury is ridiculous. I don't see how. There's some good fights for Usyk out there. Let's take Joshua out of the equation and pretend pretend that him and Tyson Fury. Oh, well, Tyson Fury is gonna. He's the saying he's number one. We all agree on that. But let's take take them out of the equation. Fury's retired. Well, let's because he might retire tomorrow and then next week again and again. Joshua takes a break. They're out at picture. We've got Wilder, Dylan White, Dubois. Who else has we got? Joyce. Sarah, pardon? Joyce. Joyce. Right. There's good fights out there for who's the kid. We are Fury and we are Joshua. There's still great fights for fans. Joe Parker in mix as well. Yui. There's still a yeah. good crop in the first to say, that's pay per view, that's pay per view, that's pay per view. Because we no, all know. No, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. None of those are pay per view. Anything with Usyk in my mind is pay per view. He's, he's why he's a dominant champion in two weights now. Right. What what, what do you know about Usyk? Nothing. Like, what's he going to say in the press conference? That's interesting. Nothing. I like, U Usyk. I, like all that. I want to see Usyk in fights because I think he's a technician. I like to watch him like a new Loma. You you wouldn't pay you wouldn't pay to watch Usyk. You never. I don't think you ever paid to watch Loma. 
I like them. I like these kids, man. Just because they're boring and they don't say no, like, I like what they stand for. And I like, I just, <laughs> them. So, you know, it's funny. You know, when I was doing my pound for pound video a couple of weeks ago, I had that I know you, uh, Usek, uh, Beta Beef, Errol Spence, Crawford. You know, all them five? Yeah. The mouths off and they're all undefeated. <laughs> yeah, can, yeah, but, but, no, but none of them do that. numbers. Pardon? But none of them do numbers. Yeah, none of them do numbers. But who gives a hoot about numbers? We just want to see great fights. I want to see Crawford fight. Well, okay, so okay, hold, hold on. Okay, so great fights. Usyk versus Dillian, not a great fight. Well, it would because I'd like to see Dylan White get touched up. No, no, no. It's not a great fight. Like you're not going to remember that one twenty years from now. Why not? Joyce, uh, maybe. He might drop him with left hook. It could be a barnstormer. If Dylan White turns the pit right frame of mind, gets the. May you're you're you're, you're sounding like Eddie Hearn right. Am I? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you mean I'm sounding like Eddie Hearn? <laughs> you're there. Well, if Dillian lands his big left hook. <laughs> you want to go and start with the link? All right. All right, we'll do. <laughs>